Welcome back, Lemon Strides, for the April 13th, Friday the 13th episode. So I hope we don't have any, any misfunctions today. Uh, but I'm really excited to be here with two of my favorite colleagues, my own school committee member, uh, Ward 4 school committee member, Nona Ojala, and Clinton State Representative, Hank Naughton. So we're going to talk with Nona first. And uh, I am so proud to have you as my school committee member. And I just want to know a little bit more about what motivated you to run for school committee. Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for having me. And um, thank you for your compliment. Um, what prompted me to run is I had worked in the school system for almost 38 years, not quite 38 years. but. Um, and it was time, I felt it was time to retire from that. Mm -hmm. But I still didn't want to give up on education then. And I spent the months after that debating to run for school mm -hmm. committee, but then decided to throw my hat into the ring and uh, run for school committee. And I felt I could offer a different perspective because I worked in the system. Right. Um, and I think I've done that. Yeah, and how often, I don't know of too many school committee members that worked so extensively in the school system and then decided to run for school committee and continue to give right. back to, <laughs> to the community. So thank you right. for that. But do, are, is that common? Does that happen? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think it has in the past sure. uh, with a few people, but mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't recall sure. names. But. Um, I think it's important. I think it's uh, a good way of um, continuing on with um, the educational process. And so one of the things we talk a lot about on Representing Lemonster is kind of how can people be better advocates? How can they reach out to you? How can they make sure that you know what they want you to be speaking up for? They can contact me on my email address, which is on the school department's website. Okay. My phone number is there. I'm always willing to take a phone call. We'll see if we can get um, it up there so that it okay. can just be on the screen. Right. right. And um, I think it's important for me to hear. I talk to a lot of people. I see a lot of people, like when I go grocery shopping, mm -hmm. I run into people and they give me their opinions. Um, I, think th I think that's important to be out in the community. Mm -hmm. So they can see you, they can talk to you, you yeah. can hear them, and that's the important thing, is listening. Is yeah, listening. I think such a, such a big role in any elected position is being able to listen, and how do, you, right. how do you access folks? How do you make sure that they're comfortable reaching out to you? And I have to commend you because I go to a lot of community events and I see you at a lot of community <laughs> events. So it's, that, those are the moments where I get, Natalie, I don't want to bother you, but, Right. Here's right. this question. I'm like, no, bother me. Like, that's my job. Right. You gotta, well, you gotta... that, that's how I feel. It's my job. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have run if I didn't think that um, I would be doing that, mm -hmm. is um, listening to people. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the biggest thing, is just your willingness to listen, mm -hmm. um, answer any question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always willing to try to get people the answers they need. Mm -hmm. Might not be quite what they want to hear, but um, right. you know, I, I look into things. Mm -hmm. And are there any projects either on the school committee or just in the community that you're really excited about that you're working on? You've been involved with Starburst a lot, right? Well, I spent I spent 20 years on the Starburst committee, being going from being just a member of the Starburst committee, um, rising up to being co-chair with Bob Healy and doing the business end of that, raising the money for that. Um, and there, with that, I met a lot of community people, a lot of um, people that work in our community, mm -hmm. and, and created bonds there, um, which I also think has helped. Um, I've been a class advisor to the class of 87 at Lemonster High. Um, I was a yearbook advisor. So I think it's important to be involved, and those are the things that I think lead you mm -hmm. to be able to deal with the public and um, yeah. be able yeah. to answer questions. As someone who, who just a year back celebrated her 10-year anniversary of graduating, uh, how is it connecting with folks that are like either living in the community and, and are graduates of Lemonster High School or like coming back around holidays? Have you seen folks like coming back and being really proud, like sharing that 
Blue Devil Pride? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think everybody that graduated from mm -hmm. Lemonster High, the majority have always felt a loyalty to their mm -hmm. high school. And um, I know I feel a loyalty to my high school that I graduated from. Yeah. Um, and I think when you see them and they, and they see you out there and they, they remember that you were the person that wrote them the tardy pass or <laughs> gave them their dismissal <laughs> note or yeah. that type of thing, I think um, they'll always ask you. It's, sometimes it's hard to remember people's names, but oh, yeah. when you go 38 years mm -hmm. um, times approximately 300 students a mm -hmm. year graduating. Mm -hmm. so. Um, it's hard to remember their names, but they remember you. So. Yeah. So we have graduation season coming mm -hmm. up, and what can students, graduates, alum like do to get, help give back? Like, if there are there ways that they can continue to to engage with the school community? I think more than ever, students now are giving back through community service, mm -hmm. and I would urge everybody to do some form of community service, whether it's working. Uh, like at Jenny's Thrift, doing volunteer work there, mm -hmm. or working at a soup kitchen, or um, doing other types of community service. I think that's important to give back. Yeah. Um, you spend time in a community growing up, and you don't realize that even though you may not feel that that community gives you something, they really do. So I think it's important that you give back in some manner. And whether you move to another community and start giving in that community, mm -hmm. I think it's important. No, and I think Taylor and I talk about this all the time, how lucky we are to have grown up in this community where mm -hmm. there is a real network of people who are doing amazing work in kind of any area that you want right. to work in, whether it's gardening or, or homelessness prevention. Like there's so many different ways that you can get back Right. Um, and that's so great. And thank you for for kind of lifting up some of those mm -hmm. some of those ways. Are there and is there any other piece of advice for someone who's thinking about maybe getting more involved in local government or wanting to to speak up more? How, what advice do you have? I to think them? I think the important thing is to first um, start paying attention to whatever committee or group you want to be mm -hmm. in either by going to their meetings and sitting in the audience or um, watching, you know, through LA TV, watching um, meetings on TV if you can't, if you can't go to those meetings. Um, it's important to uh, look into how, how the government is working, how your local government is working, mm -hmm. um, and then make a decision if, if that's something you want to do and go to meetings and um, become involved and uh, talk, mainly talk to people. I, when I first chose to choose, chose to run, um, I think it was important that I talk to other um, people who had been in office mm -hmm. on how they ran their campaigns and what they did. Seek out people to help you. I mean, my first year, when I first chose to run, it really, and it still is a very grassroots um, way of handling a campaign. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't necessarily advise how I did it, but um, it was a lot of work on my part and a lot of work on my husband's part mm -hmm. to write letters and put, get them mailings and uh, put signs out. And gradually I evolved to um, having other people help me, and mm -hmm. um, you certainly helped me, and mm -hmm. um, I appreciated that. Yeah, so do your research. And, and a, a major shout out to the Lemonster Access Television for making yes. sure that all of the school committee meetings, all of the city council right. meetings, a lot of the board meetings and commission meetings are available. Right. Um, and I think that that's another thing that we're trying to spread right. the word about. It. We're like boards and commissions for folks who aren't quite sure that they want to take on the responsibility on being on the school committee or city council, there's other ways to well, get back. Well, that's really, not only did I do Starburst, but that led me, I think, um, at the time the mayor had um, made a, um, an announcement that he was looking for people to join committees and he had a workshop at the Lemonster Library and had a list of all committees that were looking to have people come on and I ended up going on the Cultural Commission. Oh great. And served there for almost six years mm -hmm. um, working my way up from being a member to being the treasurer of that. Um, so again there's lots of avenues in Lemonster that you can you can do and there you know 
I'd urge young people to go out and do that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that somebody who's, you know, 50 years old, you know, is, can do. People in their 20s, people in their teens are serving on committees. I mean, look at, look at the school committee. We've got one of our youngest members with Isabella Lara mm -hmm. on. Um, yeah, no, it's really so. exciting, and I think it's great when we can have our local government reflect like the diversity right. of our communities right. and I think we're, we're there and it's it's really awesome to see right. folks stepping up no matter what their background is because we need those diverse voices and those different Absolutely. experiences because we all have good ideas but we're putting them together right. they get a lot better right um, so I just want to thank you so much oh, for taking okay. the time to, to right. come and chat. And you are our first school committee member, so we kind of worked our way oh. through the city council. <laughs> we have a few stragglers we're trying to get on. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I'm really, really excited well, to... Well, thank you for having me. I um, think it's important to... Uh, and, and so hopefully we'll, we'll get Nona's contact information up on the screen so that when this is actually airing, you'll have a way to get in touch with her if you're in Ward 4. And, and I urge people to do that, even if you're not in Ward 4. <laughs> Um, I take phone calls from every, everyone in our system, in our mm -hmm. district, and I go to every school in our district, not just the Ward 4 mm -hmm. schools, and um, I was just at Johnny Appleseed, and they were wonderful there, and a lot of good, a lot of good things are happening in our good, in our system. Yeah, I'm so thankful for all of the hard work that you're doing with the rest oh, of the school you. committee to make sure our schools continue thank up you. to be leaders. Uh, so thank you. And after this break, we'll be back with Representative Hank Naughton. Welcome back. So I'm here now joined with one of my favorite colleagues, Representative Hank Naughton from Clinton. So thank you for joining me. And so to give you a little background on what representing Lemonster is, it's an opportunity for folks in the Lemonster community and whoever else wants to watch us online uh, to learn more about our local elected officials. So I always have someone sure. local to Lemonster and someone I work with on the state level, and we just want to really make sure that people understand we're normal people with, I think, exceptional jobs, <laughs> and uh, how to be a better advocate, how to interact with us, and how to make sure that the issues that they care about are getting well represented either at the local level, state level, or federal level. Well, that's great, and, and thanks for doing this. You do a great job. It's it's an enjoyable working with you at the state house, and it's great being in Lemonster. I um, uh, my districts. Uh, I've always been in the abutting district for mm -hmm. my 24 years in the house, but but growing up here in, in Clinton and in North Central Mass, uh, uh, you know, Lemonster was always. We'd come here to the movies and hang out at Sears, what we called Sears Town. We still we call in, it Sears Town. <laughs> uh, high school and. Uh, and this was always a gathering point for uh, for people from Clinton. So it's great to be here. Yeah. I'm really so, looking forward so to this. So we usually start with kind of what made you want to run sure. 24 years ago. What, what, what was know. the impetus for that? Um, and I don't necessarily like mentioning the 24 years. Some people are going to say I've been there too long. But no, I, I still <laughs> you enjoy be proud it. Of that. I appreciate that. And uh, I, at the time, well, I kind of have a history of public service. Uh, I was 19 when I first got elected to the Clinton Planning Board, trying to. Uh, uh, make uh, effective use of zoning and and, uh, and building in the town of Clinton and housing issues and from that led to the um, the uh, uh, Clinton School Committee when mm -hmm. I was 23 years old and served some time on uh, on that board and uh, all the while I was a also a, uh, uh, a, a fraud and abuse investigator for the Commonwealth was my job. I went to law school nights at Suffolk Law mm -hmm. School and from there into the district attorney's office here in Worcester County and uh, served uh, in the Fitchburg and Lemonster courts as well as around the county. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I always had this attraction of public service because I felt uh, it was the most interesting. You met people, you felt like you could make their lives a little bit better mm -hmm. if you kept your eye on the ball. Uh, when I was in the DA's office, we felt like uh, you know, we helped victims and, and people who had been uh, subjects of uh, crime. And, and that was always the most fulfilling part of it, trying to make people feel a little better about themselves and their communities. And in 1994, the opportunity uh, for the rep seat in my area down in Clinton and surrounding towns, Sterling right next mm -hmm. door, Lancaster, uh, and, uh, and several other towns opened up. And uh, it was uh, an opportunity to do uh, more good, good on a broader basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I ran, and uh, and I was fortunate enough to get elected, and have been re-elected since. And the people of my district have been very good to me. I found it very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, districts, you know, I, I often say uh, our districts out here are like a microcosm of the Commonwealth. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, I've got I have 40 farms in my district, 
while at the same time Clinton is like a small city uh, with a, still a, a strong manufacturing base that mm -hmm. we work hard to keep there. Uh, we're very proud of our educational facilities, our, our environmental facilities. The Wachusett Reservoir uh, is the uh, water source for the city of Boston and its surrounding towns. And we take that down in our area as, as a, uh, almost like a sacred trust, keeping mm -hmm. that water pure, the watershed pure. And, and so here we are, all these years later, it's been uh, it's very enjoyable. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's sometimes, the long days, as you well know, <laughs> Um, we started with our 7 a.m. office hours, so right yep. now I'm like prime awake time. <laughs> and that's a typical day, though. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you're busy. And I know you say in your office the same way. Um, you know, we might have 100 calls a day, and, but my, and I'm very lucky for the, the staff I work with. And we always say, you know, that could be our 100th call. But for the person on the other end of the line, mm -hmm. it might be the most important call they're going to make that day, looking for help with their, yeah. we were working on a person's uh, social security disability application this morning in our office. Uh, or it might be you know, some direction on helping one of their kids into a state college or a mm -hmm. handicap placard for their parents' car. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and it's, it's the constituent services. We, you, oftentimes our offices mm -hmm. are, are people's uh, closest interaction with government. And, and yeah. they walk away, and hopefully they walk away feeling well served. Yeah, and I think we've talked about this a lot, how exciting it is to, to not only be working on state level policy, right. and what, it's budget season right now, so we're all really busy with that, but the fact that you're representing a community of about 40,000 people, right. you really do get to know that community really well. I'm spoiled because I get Lemonster, so I get one, one group of people to, to worry about. Um, but it's really amazing to be able to do to that work um, and help build those those bridges between the community and, and state government. And, and and you want to be known for that accessibility. Um, and we get um, all kinds of of requests. It's it's always interesting to see what people consider a constituent service. Uh, <laughs> I got a call last night uh, from a person in my district who uh, uh, was wondering whether or not she should accept delivery of of jewelry from someone in Cuba who wanted to send it to her. I'm like, well, that's not really in our line, but I, I, <laughs> I, I would kind of suggest no. That's probably not a good yeah. idea. Um, but just uh, the, the, it, 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 keeps, it keeps it interesting. It, it, no, no day is like the one before. It, it, it's, and, and when you can you know, do, you try to do an inventory of your actions during the uh -huh. day, at the end of the day, and, and you're hoping that uh, you helped at least one person. So. Yeah. And are there any projects that you're working on, legislation or community projects that you're really excited about? We are. Uh, well, on a broader basis, and, and you've been a great help, uh, we're really trying to push tourism and, mm -hmm. and cultural um, access to North Worcester County, starting down in my district in Berlin and Clinton mm -hmm. and coming up through Sterling into Lemonster, mm -hmm. uh, through Fitchburg and up into the North County. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that's a way to demonstrate and highlight the things we have going on here. I think we work very well with, the, uh, with Roy Nascimento mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, North Central Mass Chamber of Commerce and, and affiliated groups. And I, and I think a rising tide lifts all boats. Right. Um, and, and what we want to be on the lookout for is the congestion for in both housing and, uh, and business property west of 495. And our mm -hmm. districts are literally right on the line. Right. Uh, I mean, east of 495 is tremendous. And mm -hmm. if Amazon comes to town, it's even going to get, uh, mm -hmm. get more congested. And that's going to push west. And it's going to either have a good effect or a bad effect on us out here. And I think we really need to be on our guard with our planning procedures uh, to protect the quality of life. Because I really do think uh, we, we've got a special quality of life in this Absolutely. area. So that's more on a broader regional basis. In my district, um, uh, really, uh, the, the Nashua River kind of starts, or at least uh, uh, a branch of it starts in my district, in, in the town of Clinton, and then flowing through Lancaster. And it's one of my goals uh, to, to get that cleaned up, mm -hmm. to, um, to return it uh, to some recreational use, as well as uh, walking trails. And, uh, and other activities that we've seen in other parts of the state with the Acibet River, yeah. uh, with uh, the Ware River watershed all, right, all west, with the Connecticut River and some of our communities all west, and I think that could be a great resource. So that's, uh, that's a priority um, uh, for me as well as we go forward on the local basis. And uh, in, in Clinton 
and, and uh, I, I have a very diverse district. I often sometimes say, yeah, uh, you know, Clint, definitely is. Yeah, yeah, Clinton is to Northboro as, as Dorchester is to Newton. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's, it, that's always a challenge, too, to balance the different needs. Mm -hmm. We're very proud of our educational facilities throughout our district, uh, but there's different needs. Cl Clinton almost has a, a little bit of an urban feel to it. It's like a small city because it's so compact. It's the mm -hmm. second smallest town in the Commonwealth land-wise. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it is. And that's because of the Wachusa Reservoir. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got towns uh, like Northboro, which is almost like a metro west town. It's right on 495. Yeah. A lot of growth. Mm -hmm. uh, very well-managed town. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of growth that they have to be careful about. A lot of residential growth. Um, and, uh, and then my other towns of Boylston and Sterling and Lancaster. Uh, and Berlin uh, are they're right at that at that uh, edge. They they're kind of rural towns trying to protect the rural um, uh, atmosphere that people come have come to love. Mm -hmm. But they're always also trying to balance that with the appropriate amount of development. Right. And uh, it uh, you, you know what I'll tell you a funny story. Well, I think it's funny is um, in, in, in you talk about being a state rep and getting to know people. <laughs> Yesterday, mm -hmm. I was driving my son home from school uh, through Berlin, and I ran out of gas. That's how busy. Yeah. That's you how busy I've been this week. Well, Taylor knows that there's many times that I'm like, "Oh no, my engine, <laughs> my gas light's on again." Like, trying to make it to and, too many things. Uh, and, and you do. Yeah. You're so you try busy. to like, you try to stretch it. <laughs> and my 14-year-old son's looking at me, just shaking his head. How could you run out of gas? I haven't done that in probably 35 years. Yeah. And uh, and I was on this uh, pretty busy road right by the Rotary in Berlin, right off 290. And uh, a dozen people must have went by that I knew said, can we help you, can we help you? And we were walking up to a shell station yeah. to get some gas, and yeah. we finally did. But that's a great thing about having communities like that where you get to know everybody yeah. that so many people knew you. Of course, yeah. a guy in a suit walking down a country road, <laughs> you know, it kind of calls attention to you. Uh -huh. And uh, my 14-year-old my will never let me forget that. But it, it, that's an indication of, of the great effect that you can have in, 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 a, in a job like this in small mm -hmm. communities where literally a dozen people pulled up, said, do you need help, do you need help? And, uh, uh, and, and finally, you know, uh, we did get a gas can, it got squared away. But uh, so that's, the, that's mm -hmm. the fun thing, one of the fun things we'll have in a job like this. Yeah. Do you have any advice for advocates or community members who are passionate about an issue? How can they better uh, bring us over to their side and, and make their case. And of course, we've had a lot of things going on at the State House lately, uh, uh, one or two at least, where a lot of advocates have been coming in. And a couple things. Be respectful. Mm -hmm. Know your facts. Um, yeah, the research is re, you know, by you know, far you know, goes. Be, be willing to uh, take other people's opinions into account. Don't be self-righteous. Uh, uh, be informed. Uh, and uh, and be patient. Uh, realize that oftentimes things don't happen overnight. We are part of a deliberative process. It mm -hmm. was set up that way by the founding fathers. We are honored to be members of one of the oldest, city, longest sitting deliberative mm -hmm. bodies in the Western Hemisphere. Um, and it, but it is purposely set up to be a slow and deliberative process to take everyone's opinions into account. Mm -hmm. I, I often. Uh, am, am uh, amused, curious, whatever you want to say, when an advocate comes in and they've got their fact sheet in front of them and they just, they can't understand why you can't just immediately see, you know, the, the, the greatness of their idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that you, and, and, and sometimes are almost offended when you try to play the devil's advocate and ask mm -hmm. them to kind of, uh, to, to, to prove their points or, or you try to, you know, poke holes, and, and I often say to advocates, I said, well, if I don't do it in our conversation, someone else is going to do right. it on the floor of the House or in the committee. So I'm just trying to get you to justify and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and show me the, uh, the value of, of, your, of your proposal. So, so respect, patience, and, and, uh, and, and be informed about what you're talking about, and be willing to defend your idea, but also be willing to take other people's opinions into account. Mm -hmm. No, I think that that's great advice. And, and on the patient's part, as a, as a new state representative working with a lot of right. constituents have reached out with legislative ideas and they said, okay, like, let's take a step back, let's look at the whole process, let's build a coalition mm -hmm. to actually make sure that it goes forward. It's great if I think it's a good idea. Right. I'm one of 160 people. Like, I gotta convince a whole lot of other folks and they need to be hearing from folks in their district to know that that is important to them as well. And I always tell this story and it's in the same movement, it's in the ending sexual violence. 
when, when I was a college student, we worked on getting the 25080 harassment prevention order, a restraining order for sexual violence survivors until 2009. Survivors of sexual violence who didn't have an intimate partner relationship with their perpetrator, it wasn't their significant other, it wasn't their roommate, it wasn't right. their, their family member, uh, couldn't get a restraining order. And right. I came in at the end of 10 years, and we, we would meet with legislators, and they would be like, this is a really great idea. How come it hasn't passed yet? And we'd be like, we don't know. Like, what? Like, we've introduced it a bunch of times. And it wasn't until we focused on that real grassroots organizing across the entire state. Right. Every rape crisis center engaged brought survivors into legislative offices in the district and said, here, I, I'm a member of my, your community, and this makes me feel unsafe. And I want to be able to per fully participate and we finally got it passed, and that was really transformative for me. Fast forward to my first year, and I got to thank you because the, the bill was in front of your committee. Um, we're in the criminal justice reform debate, and we've been working with you on the rape kit tracking system mm -hmm. for survivors who might not necessarily report their assault right away right. to the police, but want to know where their kit is so that when they're ready, they can go and report it to the police and, and know, have the peace of mind that their evidence is there and ready for them. Um, and it was the right timing, and it was a bipartisan moment where the Democrats and the Republicans were on board, and we were able to get it in as an amendment. And it's just like, oh my God! Like, you have to be ready right. for the to do that ten years of of beating the drum and showing the research and bringing those compelling stories, and also build those relationships. So when those opportunities present itself, to kind of get it in with another piece of legislation because it's connected and it it's the right moment. Those are really exciting, and I think that that's why the. The state house can be frustrating to advocates, but also really great opportunities because it's really all about building relationships in your community, with your local electeds, between all of us, um, to make sure that we're we're paying attention to other opportunities where this legislation might be able to ha to have an impact. And, and thank you for all your work on that, and congratulations on that. And those are the days you live for. Yeah. <laughs> when it, when it finally pops, when something comes to fruition, and uh, and in all. The value of your work is seen, and and they sometimes they're far and few between. But when they come, it's really worth it. And I often say, um, this is the best liberal arts job under the sun because mm -hmm. you're exposed to issues of personal safety, environmental issues, um, veterans' issues, um, transportation, education, yeah. you name it. But because of that, sometimes you not. You can't be all things to all people. Not right. everything occurs right. to you. You need an advocate. You, and someone who's become a specialist in an area like that right. to come and explain it to you. And, and sometimes it dawns on you as a legislator, like, boo, well, you know, I hadn't thought of it in those terms. Mm -hmm. And that's what I also tell you know, new legislators coming in. Be open-minded. We all come in with our own set of life, life experiences. And, uh, but you've got to realize, and, and you've always got to push yourself, and probably all through life, to, to realize Let's you know other people's life experiences are just as value, valuable as your own, and you take those into account and try to make the world a little bit of a better place. Well, I see Taylor signaling that we're out of time. <laughs> so, Representative Naughton, thank you so much for taking the oh, time. Oh, yeah. thank up you to for Lemonster doing this. Lemonster is us. lucky to have you. Uh, and so, we will be back next month with some new guests. And for those of you who are interested in learning more about how to do advocacy and are interested in ending sexual violence in our communities, I'm hosting an Advocacy 101 with the Worcester National Organization of Women on the last Sunday of this month, April 25th, uh, from 2 to 3.30 at the Lemonster Public Library. Check out my social media page for more information. And thank you so much for tuning in.